you guys would have liked to talk about that first match and then let's discuss the Columbus match. What did you like, uh, what you saw from your team uh, against the Whitecaps? Uh, right, it was, it was the first game of the, of the season, so everybody's excited and emotions are high and I felt like uh, the, the atmosphere was amazing there in, in, uh, against the Whitecaps. But uh, as far as us coming out and, and doing what we wanted to do as far as our game plan, I think we, we did a good job. They were on top for about 15, 20 minutes in the beginning of the first half, and uh, I think we weathered that storm well, and um, they, they kind of got tired. So uh, we were able to keep possession of the ball and um, get some uh, goals on the board. Let's talk about Columbus. Obviously, the game didn't turn out the way you guys would have liked to. But what I liked was, Robbie, you guys didn't give up the fight right to the end there. Uh, you guys were battling. You were uh, trying to get that goal to possibly try and snatch out a point. And that shows a lot of character from this team that I've watched since day one that I haven't seen before. They would have packed it in and let three or four, maybe five in. But you guys battled to the end. Do you notice that... Uh, the veterans on this team are really uh, set and focused at the job at hand this year. Yeah, definitely. And uh, when when that red card did happen, uh, I, I think there were a lot of guys that still that still believed we could actually come out e either with the three points or at least one point. You know what I mean? So um, I don't think we really panicked or anything at the time. Uh, we just we just tried to stay disciplined and and focused on our job and, and staying in a formation to make it hard for us to to break down. Um, but then again, I mean, they, they did score two on us, um, and we have things we need to learn from that game. But um, it is early in the season. It's a very long season, and uh, we've done a lot to work on things uh, to get better. Robbie, you've been in this league a number of years. You know how important it is on home field to get the results because on the road, a lot of times teams struggle, and they don't get the points and the wins that they need. You guys are on that stretch early on this season because of the renovations on BMO Field. How important is it that you guys at least go 500 on this start of the season until you get home? Uh, yeah, it's important we get the results that we need. Just like you said, uh, playing the first seven games of the season on the road isn't an easy task for anybody. But um, I think uh, I don't think we go into anybody's uh, stadium and, and feel like we don't have a chance. You know what I mean? I feel like we're pretty confident. We've got a, a confident team and guys full of skill. To, to get the job done and it's just a mentality when we go in there of um, just thinking of playing where we're in front of our own fans and, and doing the same thing we would do as if we were at home. Um, so if we can get that mentality in our in our heads and, and go about it like that, I think um, I think we'll do well. A lot of quality on this team this year, but quality means nothing unless you guys put the results on the board. And I look at Michael Bradley and I tell my own two sons who love and play the game at a high level, I ask them to watch him on and off the field. He's a leader. He's a pit bull. He never gives up. And it's starting to rub off. You're starting to see on all the team in these first two games. How important is it to have a guy like that that shows no matter what, what the score is for the full 90 plus, he's going to give you everything he's got. Uh, it's huge, you know what I mean? And and that's something that we need on our team. And not only him doing that, but that needs to transfer, just like you said, rub off on other players on the field and, and those who are coming on to make a difference um, from the bench, you know what I mean? And, and just make it so no matter the score, no matter what, what situation we're in, we're, we're at least out there fighting. Uh, things aren't always going to go our way as far as, touches and, and, and getting the goals that we need, but you can always get out there and, and, and know the game plan and, and work hard and, and really make it tough on your opponent. And uh, um, I think, just like you said, throughout the team, uh, there's a big group of guys that, that have that mentality and, and do it well. Let's talk about Coach Greg Vanny. I've had the opportunity last year to watch him in action in League One with the TFC uh, League One Academy team, and I really enjoyed his style. Calm, cool, collective, calculated, and instructing his players on what he wants. Not yelling, not losing control. How important is it to have a coach that's like that on the sideline, thinking and understanding the game and transferring it over to his players? Uh, it's huge because, I mean, just depending on... on how the the game is played out uh there are changes that need to be made and and, and things like that and um when you've got somebody that that can read the game and and is very calculated uh it, it makes it a lot better and uh i think it's for him and, and the rest of the rest of the coaching staff they they do a good job of of letting us know what our roles are you know what i mean and um and they're there to to let us know if you do if you do need some information on it or need any help knowing what your role is 
uh, come in and, and, and they'll do whatever they need to do to make sure we know that. And um, I'm, I, as far as the players, we've got every resource we, we need possible to be successful. Um, so, um, and I think we've got a lot of, uh, like you said, veteran players and are willing to do what it takes and know what it takes to, to be successful and get to where we need to be. Robbie, you've played with LA Galaxy, Real Salt Lake, big game coming up for you next week against them. You know this league, you've been around this league. I have been watching this league since day one. I've taken a lot of shots from friends, colleagues, relatives, you name it, uh, making fun of me watching this so-called Mickey Mouse League, as they used to tell me. And I gotta tell you, right now, a lot of them are eating their words because now players from all over the world wanna come and play here and the quality's getting better and better. Uh, you see that Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Vancouver, Portland, it is lights out crazy, European atmosphere. We all saw like the fans are great there. Talk about MLS, the way it has really grown in leaps and bounds, not only in quality, but the intelligence of the fans and what they want. Yeah, just soccer as a whole and, and in the States, the game alone, um, more people are recognize it. Uh, a lot of younger kids are more involved in it. And uh, mm -hmm. just like you said, it's bringing a lot more fans to these MLS games and the All-Star games and things like that. And obviously with the help of these well-known players coming overseas and, and partaking in, in this league, it's, it's become a big thing. And um, a lot of guys do think it's easy to come over here and play, but uh, I, I haven't talked to one guy that's been overseas and came here and said it, it's an easy league, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, until you actually get here and, and play a game, that, then they realize that, you know what I mean, it's, I mean, it's not easy at all. Um, but the quality, just like you said, keeps going up each year. And uh, it just keeps getting bigger as a whole here in, in the States. You're bang on. We had on Maurice Sedou on last week from the Philadelphia Union, former TFC player himself, and we talked about uh, the, the, the friends of his from Europe still contacting him, talking to him about how the game has grown and how they enjoy on a Sunday evening, whether in England, in Italy, in Spain, wherever, sitting back and watching that late game on Sunday night from uh, here in MLS, and I think it is fantastic. Robbie, talk about also how USA has grown in leaps and bounds. I've said this for the last six years. I truly believe in my heart of hearts, even though I'm a proud Canadian, I believe that the USA is knocking on the door, whether it's Qatar or Russia, to get to a Final Four in a World Cup. And why I say that is because the Americans have poured a ton of money. They are doing it right from the grassroots on up. They've hired a proper coach and they mean business. I, I believe that. Am I far-fetched by saying that? No, I think you're right on, um, and and that's the thing. When you all these other these other countries, they they have these academies, and you got these kids starting from a young age, and, and just built into these programs, you know. So um, I feel like that's what's what's starting to happen in the states. You've got these these academies with the, with the kids starting off at a young age, and and letting them learn the way wherever it is they are they're playing at at the time, how they play, and and what needs to be done to be successful. And I think that's that's what helps the the production and and the quality of of players in the in the United States and uh, I think it's taken great strides and and it's in the right direction. Robbie, let me ask you this: uh, I've traveled all over the U.S. of A. Been to a lot of youth tournaments with my kids and and here in Canada as well. And what I still notice is is one thing with the North American player is that they've got great athleticism, great speed. They're fearless. And they've got a lot of great components, but what they're missing is a couple components that I still think that they are not grasping. It's creativity when they're in that box. It looks like they're lost, whether it's the American or Canadian player, on what to do once they get into that box to finish. That's number one. And number two, I hate to say it because you're in Canada, uh, you know, with the sport of hockey so huge. In soccer, whether it's the Canadian player or the American player, they don't go down easily when they've, they're, they've been taken down from behind or, or hacked at. The European, South American player, they live off that. They go down instantly, and that's part of the game. The Canadians and the Americans don't do that. Explain why. I don't know. I think to an extent it's, it's part of the game, but you got guys that, that overdo it and, and are flopping just, just ridiculous. So... Um, I, don't, I mean, I can't really tell you why it's done, but um, I just feel like it's you kind of. I wouldn't say it's cheating, cheating the game and, and flopping, but if you get fouled, you get fouled uh, and you go down. But if if you're embellishing it and, and, and trying to get another player sent off, then that's another thing. I don't think that that's right. And 
that's the way the game should be played. But um, I mean, just like you said, different different styles of play, and and people have their own ways. What about an identity, Robbie? Here in Canada, we still don't have a certain identity that we want to see from our youngsters played from club to club, from academy to academy, or even the national team. And, and I'm pretty sure that Jurgen Klinsmann hasn't yet instilled an identity. Is that important in your mind to really get an identity, a style that people know when they're going to play the U.S., what they're getting, or Canada? Yeah, I think so. Um, just like you said, for even, I feel like if you're going to, Run, run an academy, or you got the, the young national teams that are that are going up into the into the full national team. That if you're gonna play a certain way, that you you might as well start at a young age. And I'm, I know it's tough. You never know if the the coach is gonna be there and what the, what the new coach would want coming in. But if if you want to play a certain way, I feel like it's got to start at a at a certain age, and you just you got to stick to it and really buy into into that idea and, and just pound it into the kids and, and from there on up it, it's just got to be a, a way of playing and, and that's what I think. Robbie you've got some unfinished business I'm sure you still have the desire the quench to get back into that USA uniform gold cup coming up world cup qualifiers coming up how important is it for you that you start strong this season with Toronto first and foremost and then uh, get the eyes open to Jurgen Klinsmann and his staff to give you another crack another opportunity to play uh, for the red white and blue. Uh, it's always a great opportunity to, to play for your country and uh, I'm just, just like before, when I when I was part of the national team, I I just made sure I focused on what I needed to do here for TS or for Salt Lake at the time. But here at TFC, just focus on what I need to do, um, help my team win to be successful. And and if it comes, then it comes. But um, that that's the main focus is making sure that as a team we're successful. And obviously, if if I can get some goals in there um, and make a difference, uh, it would it would also help. But that's the main focus now. Robbie, you're living a dream a lot of youngsters would love to live, but for you to get where you're at today, there was a lot of hard work you put into it to get where you're at, but obviously there's people in your life to help get where you're at. Was there a couple coaches that meant a lot to you that you still think of today? Was there a, a parent, a sibling, or someone that believed in you that never said, don't give up, Robbie, keep going, we believe in you? Who are those people? Uh, there's lots of people. Obviously my family, um, they sacrificed a lot going to those club tournaments in, in California and out of state. Um, so much sacrifice was made. And, of course, um, back home, I, I had a coach, Harry Demos, that still to the day um, keeps in contact with me and makes sure everything's all right, not only with with my, my job, my soccer, but just personal life and things like that. But I feel like just along the way, the, even the players I've, I've, I've played with, teammates, um, other coaches that I've had, I've learned something from everybody. And I just kind of try and take – something way out of every situation that I've been in and, and kind of apply it to the, to the road I'm, I'm being led on. And that puts a smile on my face as a parent. Like, to me, it doesn't matter how many tanks of gas I have to put in, how many mornings I have to get up early, how far I got to go. As long as my, uh, my sons are happy, enjoying the game, and they're getting something out of it, it means the world to me. And I'm sure uh, that's what you think of today when you think of all those long rides. It meant so much to you. Oh, uh, definitely. Um, just, look, just like you said, looking back on it now, because um, at that, when you're that age, you don't really think about that kind of stuff. But looking back at it, they definitely um, did whatever they needed to do to make sure, just like you said, I was happy. I was doing what I wanted to do, and um, giving me the best shot at being successful at, at what I do and having fun. Robbie, just before we let you go, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. But every player that comes on our show, uh, we always want them to give out a tip or two to the youngsters out there uh, to help them out, to get to where you're at. Maybe there's some uh, young boy out there or young girl uh, that maybe uh, is struggling with confidence and the coach doesn't believe in them and game after game they keep sitting on that bench, but they still have that dream, that desire to get where Robbie Finley is at. What do you want to say to that young boy, that young girl? I would just say, um, don't don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. If you believe in yourself, that's that's all you really need. Get out there and and do the work that you need to do. The extra work um, that makes you better. But don't ever let anybody tell you that that you can't amount to what you want to be. Because um, I've seen it plenty of times to where people have been told that, and it, it turns out the other way. And they they turn out to do great things. That's with anything, not just soccer, but just in life. Um, just if you believe in yourself, just just keep pushing. It'll be tough at times, but um, believe in yourself and you can make things happen.
outstanding, great advice. God bless you.